of the Hollywood house parties in Sunset Hills. These used to take shit that they would put on their lips. And then they would ask a girl if they could get a sip of her drink. Mm. And they would put the agent, they would rub it on the rim. And then when the girl would continue to drink a drink, she would inject it. And the next thing you know, the bitch was numb and dead. And they got it in the tub, screwing in. Oh, oh, they they want me to tell they want me to tell the, the total story. Okay, I'll finish it. So then what what happens is they presented a bad contract and you like I'm not signing this shit. and they like oh you don't want to sign. And they bring out the videotape. Hop in the tape. Let me show you what this nigga did last night and you like oh shit, I'm gonna sign this right now. <laughs> I don't want nobody to see that. Bow wow. Okay, move right along. Oh, move right along. <laughs> you made my husband walk away. I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Shout out to Snoop for handling that for Bow, but they should have got. Oh my there. god! Oh my okay. god! You just turned. I don't even know if I'm old enough for this conversation anymore. I just became like a whole three year old. <laughs> I emotionally regress for what you just said. She is here to correct any misinformation. Jaguar Wright is widely regarded as the RB equivalent of Cat Williams. Oh, that's the beautiful thing about being the kind of honest <clears throat> I am. Because what I'm saying is true, because what I'm saying is backed up on honest to God, complete integrity, I can say something like that. Let everybody be mad about it and step the f away. And let's see what reality say. It ain't my fault I be ahead of the curve. It really ain't my fault. I'm just operating in my principle. And then I heard about some of the troubles that came to your door. But if I'm correct, I want to say this while we on camera. When we finished the interview that day, didn't I give y'all some warnings about things that might happen? Yeah. Because of this interview. Yeah. Was I wrong? No. Oh, but was I right? Yeah. <laughs> So some of, I, some of the some of the things the Tim and Campbell thing was interesting to me because we just hadn't heard from him and he just kind of popped out of nowhere. According to Wright, she is currently making alarming accusations regarding Jay Z's alleged involvement in Sean Diddy's freakouts. The friendship between the two extends much beyond just recording music together. So here's all the information you need to know. Jaguar disclosed that a number of artists in the field have encountered different forms of harassment, suggesting that people like Diddy Shancombs and Jay-Z are jointly responsible for the suffering these men endure in order to further their goals of power and pleasure. She also suggested that most of these men fit the description of homophobic thugs. I don't need to go nowhere when he's trying to knock me out, screw me in the ass in a tug, like well, I'm a and, dead person. But wait a minute, I know why, I know why Hollywood He just talked is about this, I gotta light up my CBD. Look, light up your CBD, but let, let me get this in. I know why, I know why Hollywood is so, so invested with the ain't cavity, but I want you, I, I want to throw some at you. You tell me if this is true, right? It happens at a lot of parties. You're thinking about signing. I'm talking about the dudes, right? You go to this party. Let's say it's cash money. Okay. You go to this party, you get knocked out, train ran on you and your ass. It's videotaped. You wake yeah. up. They say you that's don't how sign. They get you, that's, how they, that's how they get them to put the dresses on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I knew Hollywood it. Hollywood is black it. is black male central. And they all doing each other in the It's just, it's. Well, I mean, you got to think about it. Anybody has a vagina, but you know, it's dominion. It's that final frontier. They didn't all been in each other's butt, So they literally are all tight. If that is true, wait a minute. If that is true, there's only one man to blame for it. Chris Strokes, Chris Stokes, sorry. Chris, you said Chris Strokes and you right. <laughs> you know what still trips me out? That if you go back to the MTV Chris episode mm -hmm. that they did with Chris. Right. And Marcus was there because Marcus was living there because he was Marcus's guardian. You remember that crib? Yep. yep. It was it was an amazing apartment, but they only had one bedroom. Yeah. And they allowed and that film to hit the television. 
Like we were dumb. What you got two grown ass men, a young man and an older man living in a one bedroom apartment for where the f the uh, Mark is sleeping, the tub? They can't even sleep in a bed, they gotta sleep on the couch. That's how comfortable that was. He didn't even bother to rent a two bedroom. So yeah. nobody would have suspicion. Cause that was his name. I'm just saying. Why would you live in a one bedroom apartment with the boy you a guardian of? Who's your artist? Who's making thousands of dollars a show but don't got his own bedroom? Going Ahead Jaguar said that in order to maintain control, music industry moguls like Diddy have created a harsh environment. She also said that many of them have bad relationships with their singers. Jaguar claimed to have witnessed this frightening aspect of the industry firsthand when on a work visit to a studio, but she did hint that this is just the beginning of the problem behind the scenes. Jaguar revealed that nobody is interested in nurturing talented musicians. Instead, they are searching for people who can meet their unique demands in exchange for money. This is the harsh reality, she said, where musicians must endure a variety of humiliating situations in order to succeed. Obviously, things get even more complicated when Wright, who has made it a point to expose the negative aspects of the music industry, claims in an interview that Diddy was encouraged and helped by well-known music executives Jay-Z and Clive Davis to be their friends and to find up-and-coming musicians for their enjoyment. Wright also asserted, using mafia-like rules, that Diddy's dominance in the industry is the consequence of the dread his parties instill and the backing he gets from Jay-Z. Jaguar also asserted that unsuspecting artists are coerced into signing contracts that imply they will take part in private affairs. She related an incident in which she witnessed Diddy acting suspiciously around Christopher Williams, implying that these kinds of behaviors were exchanged for contracts. Jaguar also raised concerns about the unexplained deaths of Uptown Records members, pointing to a pattern related to their objective of securing accurate biographies of Diddy. I was thinking to myself the other day, Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, I'll be sure, Heavy D, and Puffy. And Kim was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. Mm. Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. And then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was gonna meet up with him because we were in Vegas and then the next thing you know. You wanna know what they all had in common though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And Al B. Shore was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has he, has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest mother because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning. Just him. I guess Al disappointed you. You know, it's, I speak for a reason. When you see this bullshit ass motherfucking game f with people that you love, that you like, you know, that you. There's too many coincidences. Too many. You. You honeycomb. Oh. <laughs> Stamp it. We're going to get you and your little dog, too. Mm. And congratulations, young man. <laughs> Run as fast as Cassie did.
<laughs> However, where is she having all of these details verified? John Deal, with the help of other well-known musicians, was correct to guess. According to Jean, Diddy has been actively involved in organizing well-known homosexual parties where Hollywood's elite are reported to partake in more than just cocktails. Naturally, Diddy seems to be more than just a guest at these events. He actively looks for more attendees, giving the impression that these are invitation-only parties. It all started we was in Atlanta. And this story starts when I'm with Puff and he's in the exotic bookstores and he's doing shopping, right? He's shopping, getting his stuff and everything like that. So, you know, this is the first time I was ever in an exotic bookstore with Puff. So, you know, I'm giving him his space. He's taking things off the shelves and stuff like that because they gave him a brown paper bag. When they gave him a brown paper bag, he was just putting stuff in there. So I said, damn, you know, he got to go put it on the counter and, you know, show everybody what he's getting. So as he's going, I'm just looking at the places where he's picking stuff from. So there's one part he he, he picked up uh, some things from up here on my left side. And then he, he picked like a, quite a few of them down. I'm like, okay. He put them in the bag. So when I went by there and I looked up there I, and it said plug. And I'm like, hey, yo, <laughs> I, was, I was messing with him. Cause people don't understand, you know, we was, we, we was like friends, he was a part of the same gang, so I'm still gonna tease him, I'm still gonna mess with him and everything like that. I could do that. It wasn't just no security thing. So I say, yo, what are you getting this for? <laughs> and it said plugs, and he was like, yo, yo, can I do my shopping by myself? I said, yeah, you can do it by yourself, brother. And he started walking and everything like that. And when he got to, I just waited at the counter. When he got to the counter, he didn't even have to show the guy nothing. He just gave the guy a wad of money. I mean, I mean, like, he gave a, the guy a stack, something like this. And Puff wasn't a dude to carry no 20s and no 50s and nothing like that. And I mean, like, he just said, boom. And we walked out the store. While Gene hasn't specifically mentioned Jay-Z, we all know who Diddy's closest business partner is and where the party money is coming from. Gene also stated in the interview that these events serve as a playground for Hollywood's elite, who are well known and have the resources to pay hefty fees for access to the most unusual events in the area, enabling them to indulge in their wildest and darkest fantasies. However, John painted a startling picture of Turkish baths as a regular spot for gay men to meet in secret. He suggested that these exchanges are more than just hot baths because of Diddy's ability to arrange things, rather they are part of a supposed network where these guys meet up for sex and secretly with Diddy and most likely Jay-Z. I knew I should wait outside a Turkish baths for him. You know what they do in the Turkish baths? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay. That's where a lot of gay men meet. And they all take hot baths together. <laughs> to each his own though, bruh. But that's a lot of sh that these guys get into when they start having certain meetings with certain people and they meet them at the Turkish bath and they do their meetings and they meet their people in those type of situations where they're comfortable with. So they don't have to worry about uh, their indiscretions coming out. You mean? You understand what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, twice, sometimes, three times a week, me and the driver be outside, he'll run into the Turkish bath. Needless to add that Gandil confirmed to the fact that Sean Combs coerced Cassie Ventura into having sex with other men as he observed her being sexually assaulted and in some cases even her. Since Wright has already provided the necessary documentation, we can now be certain that this is the case. We shouldn't be laughing about that, man, you know, because she is a victim. You know what I'm saying? She is a victim, man, and if this is her victim story, we got to be more, um, I think, more compassionate. She was 17 years old at the time. She was 
fascinated by that whole sh by that whole thing, getting on a G4, G5 jet, you understand? And what was her parents, man? What was her daddy, her mama? They didn't miss their child? She didn't come home that night? But what you trying to do? So to say that what he's being known for with Cassie, I can only equate to some of the things that I've seen him and Kim go through. You understand what I'm saying? So people get mad, you know, but it is what it is. I can only equate his action like that. Crazy. And then there was Kim Porter's death in 2023, which Jay helped arrange. A lot of people were shocked by Kim Porter's passing, especially Shad Diddy Combs, her ex-partner with whom she had three children. Yes, Diddy's involvement is questionable. I will advocate for you. Because see, I know something that a lot of people don't know. I know that you and Kim Porter had a sit down right before she left us. Tell him, tell him, please tell him. And I know Kim had some very good advice to give you. And I believe that, that this is why things are happening as they're happening now. Kim was smart, wasn't she, Cassie? Kept you alive and kept you safe. I will advocate for you, but you are a victim. And I know that. Congratulations on surviving and congratulations on standing up. I'll advocate for you. F that put and his little dog. Now you you want to know what's crazy, Jaguar? What? I was and I, I can just say it now because I I mean I'm not going I'm not gonna do it. So why not just talk about it now? I had an offer to go over there to revolt. Oh, I'm sure. Yep, I, 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 had, I had an offer. They've been watching. And you know, I was told that, hey, I can have you in a room with Puff tomorrow. <clears throat> and that just sounded crazy to me. That yeah. just, like, you yeah. can have me in a room with him tomorrow. Like, what, excuse me? <laughs> like, it's the grandest honor on earth. Given that Porter was committed to Diddy and supported him through all of their highs and lows, the actress and model died from low bar pneumonia at the age of 47 after engaging in a protracted and violent relationship with the producer and rapper. Many others wondered why he never asked her to marry him. Some speculated that he was too focused on his career and other women, or that he was afraid of being committed. Few others accused him of abusing Porter both physically and psychologically, citing allegations made by his former security guard Gene Deal. Even if they called me, about the abuse with Kim. He said, they say, yo, Gene, did you see him beat Kim? I said, on that particular case, no. Have I seen him rough Kim up and use the pillow? They, they, you know, he, he liked to play fight and be hurting the girls while he play fight. Have I seen him do that? Yeah, I, I've seen him done that. You understand? And I've asked him, you all right, you good? Y'all you good? And she just look and stuff, he'll stop. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was like a big uncle one time. So now when he get to the hospital, his right wrist is ripped open. So Mr. Dill, uh, when you got to the hospital, what happened? Well, I seen his wrist ripped up. I would testify that I seen his uh, wrist uh, wrapped up in a, uh, um, uh, uh, T-shirt, and he said it right there in front of Kim, you know what I'm saying, that, yo, you could have killed him because she hit an artery, you understand? And I would tell how, how I saw how Kim looked and would, I would testify to everything if I was told to, you know, if I was brought in to testify against that, you understand? I'm not gonna sit there and wait in jail for him? Nah, I wouldn't do that. So you don't have no problem testifying? I have no problem sitting in the court of law, doing my due diligence, and 
testifying on stuff that I already spoke of on the internet. When I talked about him, a Kim, and she had to cut his wrist to get him off of him, I would tell what I saw when I went to the hospital. I have no problem. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody think. If I've already said it on the internet, if I've already said it on different platforms and programs. Considering everything that Gan says was done to influence the lawsuits and allegations that garnered a lot of publicity, it is clear that Diddy has never been questioned about any of it, and some of the more explicit details were allegedly altered before the court proceedings ever started. Come and see the power of that moment, the amazing things that we did with our bodies and our minds and our spirits. There was not one person in that room that was not elevated that night. And everyone in that room would be a liar if they said that I wasn't responsible for 75% of it. I understand and I lament and I cry and I grieve for Chris Brown's frustration because I know what it's like to be the fucking best and they won't let you be. I just decided I was gonna find another way. I'm gonna burn it all to the fucking ground. Fuck you all. None of you have the right to police God's gift. And what fucking gives a man a right to think that he gets to place a monetary value on a gift from God and then enforce it with treachery and barbary? Like you fucking pimping God's gift? Most of y'all don't even fucking pay taxes to the God you serve. Fucking cheating. Shell corporation after shell corporation. Fuck you mean, like, cruelty-free artistry. I, that's the challenge. Can we make albums without a sexual assault involved? Can we make albums with, with, without peeping toms looking in girls' green rooms and dressing rooms? Can we make albums without the girls in the videos being sodomized right before they were thrown on camera and told to smile. Otherwise, they were gonna get sodomized again, but sniff this shit and you'll be okay. Like, can, can, can we release projects without any of that kind of shit happening? Stuff she doesn't really want to look at. Stuff's all for now. Please leave your comments below for further information. Press the bell symbol.